Today's mission is about food. The Earthlings call it a food chain and a food web. Go now and gather information about it. Yes, yes sir. sir. All living things need food to survive. If not, they go hungry and die. I'm pretty sure about that part. Plants can make their own food by using the energy from the sun. This process is called photosynthesis. Animals cannot make their own food like plants. Some animals depend on plants for food and some other animals depend on other animals for food. Therefore, the plants are the main source of food for animals. So the plants are the producers while the animals are the consumers. Understand that? Based on their eating habits, animals can be divided into three groups. Herbivores, carnivores and omnivores. Herbivores are animals that only eat plants. Examples of such animals are grasshoppers, caterpillars, rabbits, and many, many more. Carnivores only eat animals. Examples of such animals are snakes, eagles, tigers, and many more. Omnivores eat both plants and animals. Examples of such animals are chickens, ducks, bears, and many more. So plants are the producers that will be eaten by the consumers. Consumers will then be eaten by other consumers. These relationships between them are called the food chain. Hmm, it tastes deliciously sweet. <laughs> The food chain shows you how living things on this planet becomes food for another. Let's see some examples. This is a paddy plant and it's a producer. The plant makes its own food from the sun's energy. This is a grasshopper and it's a consumer. It eats plants to live and have the energy to survive. The frog comes and eats the grasshopper. This is the snake that eats the frog that has eaten the grasshopper. The snake is another consumer. You see now how living things need each other to survive because they become food to each other. However, the relationship between each living thing in terms of food source is not that simple. In this chart, you can see that the grass is the food for the grasshopper. The grasshopper is food for the lizard. The grasshopper is also the food for the birds. The birds and the lizard will then be eaten by other consumers. Some relationship they have, huh? <laughs> when there is more and more food linked to the chain, then the food web is formed.
Where did you get all this food? From the producers, of course. I'm a consumer in this food chain relationship. Remember? A consumer doesn't mean you can eat everything here. They all know when to stop eating. You understand that, don't you? Before other consumers eat this food, it is better I eat it first. <laughs> one type of food can be eaten by more than one type of animal. Let me explain. This is a chart of two food chains. The first food chain is that of grass. It is eaten by a caterpillar and then it will be eaten by a bird. The second food chain shows that the grass is eaten by the grasshopper and this insect will be eaten by a bird. Now the two food chains combined form a food web. The arrow points two ways from the grass to the caterpillar and to the grasshopper. They will then be eaten by a bird. This is a food web. Let me explain it to you with another example of a food web. I can explain it better than Arif. This is a food web in a paddy field environment. Paddy will be eaten by the chicken, grasshopper and sparrow. The grasshopper will be eaten by the frog. Then, the snake will eat the chicken, frog and sparrow. The snake will then be eaten by the eagle. Now you can see from one food web, they become five food chains. Now can you understand what I mean? <laughs> From the food chain chart, we can see the type of animals found in the paddy field. The grasshopper is a herbivore. The frog, snake and eagle are the carnivores. The chicken and sparrow are omnivores. You see, food webs or food chains are important to sustain the balance of nature. The balance of nature is ensured if the population of the different species of living things in nature are controlled. When the food web is not balanced, the population of animals can either become more or less, depending on the type of food that the animals eat. A change in the population of a certain species will affect the population of other species. If a species becomes extinct, all other animals that depend on the species for food may also become extinct or move to another place. If the farmer sprays insecticides on his vegetables, all grasshoppers, caterpillars and butterflies will die. That means the bird has to fly away to another place in search of food. The amount of vegetables produced will increase because there are no pests destroying the plants. The food web tells us that the changes in the number of organisms in a food web will cause the number of other organisms to change too. A species must have more than one food source to ensure its survival. Let's say, if the rats in a paddy field are killed, the snakes can depend on the frogs as food. However, there are animals that only depend on one type of food to live. If their only source of food is no longer available, these animals will not be able to survive. They may become extinct. The very cute panda can only eat bamboo shoots. The little cute koalas eat only eucalyptus leaves. 
The pangolin only eats ants. Poor little thing. I hope they will survive with enough food for them to eat. Don't worry too much. The earthlings will take care of their animals. It's their responsibility to do that. Mm -hmm. <laughs>